Hey everybody, uh, Tyron here from the first VFW. This is a tutorial on the basics of understanding the weather model in Falcon BMS. Uh, this is meant to be sort of a prerequisite for using WeatherGen. Um, if you're already familiar with the weather model in BMS, how weather works in general, you can skip this one and go on to the other video tutorials that I'm planning to do about WeatherGen in particular. All right, so the thing to understand about weather in BMS is um, you have to understand essentially what um, what the weather model is. So in Falcon BMS, um, there are different uh, types of weather models. So let's pull up the weather um, uh, page in the TE Builder here. And so you'll see that there are a bunch of options for weather model. Now, all of these are explained um, very well in the BMS manual. Um, so I'll refer you to that, but I thought I would do a video uh, tutorial uh, just in case people prefer to learn that way. Um, so there's probabilistic, deterministic, and map model weather. We are only going to talk about map model weather. That's the newest model. Um, it's the most sophisticated one, the most flexible one, and it's the only one that WeatherGen um, concerns itself with. So we're going to pick this one. So the basic way that this works is that in the map model you have an fmap file. And the fmap file um, records for every position on the map at a granularity of about 9 mile by 9 mile squares five things. It records temperature, pressure, wind direction, wind speed, and weather type. Um, I think the first four of those are pretty obvious, temperature, pressure, wind direction, wind speed. Um, weather type is essentially about uh, the clouds. And we're going to talk a lot about clouds because a lot of the, the information in that fmap file has to do with that. Um, so the weather type can be one of four different categories. Fair, inclement, oh, sorry, well, I'll go in order. Sunny, fair, poor, and inclement. That's effectively in order from uh, best to worst weather. Um, so uh, in, at every position on the map, um, and let me flip over to a, a map that will maybe show this a little bit more. So here's, here's a... Uh, diagram showing Korea with a, a map of weather type overlaid on it. So you can see that it is divided up into into squares. Like I said, these are each about um, nine miles on a side. And at each position, the fmap file records information about wind speed, wind direction, um, temperature and pressure, and like I said, weather type. And what we're seeing here is weather type. So the clear areas here uh, represent um, sunny weather. The green areas rep represent uh, fair weather. The yellow areas represent poor, and the red areas represent inclement. Note that it is not a, um, a radar type display where the green indicates light rain and the red indicates heavy rain. This is actually about weather type in Falcon, which I said is one of those four categories. So what do these four categories mean? Um, well, sunny, which as I said is, to, is indicated by these clear areas, basically means no clouds. Um, the fair means um, only cumulus clouds with um, up to 50% coverage of the sky. Poor means a solid overcast, so 100% sky coverage by the clouds, but no precipitation. And inclement means solid overcast with precipitation. All right, let's flip back to Falcon. So the fmap file contains that information for every position on the map. Um, so really, there's not a lot to say here about the model. The, the one, th right, because most of the information is in that fmap. The one thing is that there is this checkbox. Um, maps auto update and the way that works is that uh, if you have that checked the weather will change um, the that the, you can store in a folder called weather maps updates uh, weather map updates um, a series of time stamped fmap files and when that time occurs in the sim the weather will change to being what it is in the corresponding fmap file um, now, WeatherGen will automatically set all of the information that you care about on this, so I'm not going to go into, into that in detail. You can refer to the manual for that. just wanted to mention that that checkbox, so if you do use uh, WeatherGen to, to create weather and you pull it up and you see this checkbox check, that's, that's where it came from. All right, so since the fmap file contains information about the wind and the temperature and the pressure, when you're using the map model, you won't see anything on the atmosphere tab. You won't see anything on the wind tab. Those are coming from the fmap file. You will see information on the Turbulence tab, um, but since in WeatherGen we just accept the defaults, the defaults are pretty good, I don't see that there's a whole lot of reason to change this. It's kind of an advanced thing, so we're going to ignore the Turbulence tab. The one thing to be aware of is the Cloud tab. Like I said, the weather type, uh, uh, sunny, fair, poor, and inclement, determines what kind of clouds you're going to have. 
But exactly how those clouds are is determined here on the cloud tab. And, and, and this is true because like the details of how much cloud cover there is and so forth are not in the fmap file. We don't have the ability in BMS to say that, for instance, the uh, overcast ceiling at this location in the world is 5,000 feet and at this location is 6,000 feet. Instead, the clouds are determined by the weather type. So everywhere in the world where the weather type is sunny, you'll have the same kinds of clouds. Everywhere in the world that the weather type is poor, you'll have the same kind of clouds. And those are determined here on the clouds page of the weather uh, interface in, um, in uh, BMS. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, we have information about um, uh, f kind of three types of cloud and visibility. So the three types of cloud, or I don't know what you want to call it, but three types of things you have here are uh, cumulus, stratus, and contrails. I think contrails is pretty obvious, right? This is the altitude at which the condensation trails form. Um, the thing you need to understand about, uh, uh, and cumulus is actually also fairly obvious. These are the poofy clouds, and the controls here are how much of the sky they cover from 5 to 50%, and whether they are uh, uh, lots of little clouds or a smaller number of big clouds. These are the sliders that you can control. Um, stratus is a little bit more complicated. For sunny and fair weather, the stratus uh, clouds, so-called stratus clouds, are that very paper-thin layer that you get at very high altitudes that you might have seen. Uh, for poor and inclement layer uh, weather, the stratus layer is the thick layer, the you know the maybe maybe thousands of feet thick. So for sunny and fair, we are setting that paper-thin to be at some altitude here. And for poor and inclement, it's a little more complicated. The way it works is that this value right here, the poor inclement, is referring to the top of that thick overcast layer. So in both poor and inclement layer, the tops are always the same for both poor and inclement. Here it's set to 13,300 feet. These are the defaults. Um, and then these two values deter uh, determine how thick that layer is. So the overcast layer in poor weather is going to go from 13,300 feet down 2,000 feet to 11,300 feet. For inclement weather, it's going to also be a top at 13,300 feet, but it's going to go down 7,000 feet. So at the bottom, the underside of the solid overcast layer will be at, what is that, 6,300 feet. Um, note that because of the blending that Falcon does between adjacent areas, you might not actually see um, the bottom of the, the so-called stratus layer as low as the setting would indicate. Let me go back to the other uh, picture for a minute. So here, for instance, we have a very small area of um, inclement weather surrounded by poor. So here, if we were using those default settings, the tops of the stratus layer would be at 13,300 feet, and the bottom here in poor would be 2,000 feet lower at 11,300. Um, and then here, even though the setting says that the clouds go down 7,000 feet, because it's right next to an area of poor weather, it would actually not be that low. It would slowly lower as you go farther into the area of poor weather. But because this is so small, you'd probably never see the bottoms all the way down at, um, what was the number, uh, 6,300 feet. For a larger area like this, then you would see it go lower and lower. Kind of as you went in, the bottoms of the cloud would descend. And they may or may not reach all the way down to the, to the 6,300 feet that the settings would indicate. So just be aware, if you're trying to get a really low um, ceiling, you might need to make sure that the area of inclement weather that you're putting uh, on, on the map is large, large enough so that the uh, the BMS has time to fade in that lower value. All right. Um, uh, cumulus, again, fairly self-explanatory. You can have cumulus um, clouds uh, in the in the same, in poor and inclement weather. You might have both a, uh, a solid, in fact, you'll always have a solid overcast, which you indicate here, and you might also have uh, cumulus clouds as well, and they, and they can overlap. Um, that's basically it. That's really the, the way it goes, is you have an FMAP file that indicates for each position on the map um, what the you know temperature, pressure, wind direction, and speed, and what the weather type is. And then there are global settings that indicate, given the weather type, what the clouds are like. I guess I sh didn't mention visibility, but that one's pretty obvious, right? For sunny weather, visibility is 30 miles. For fair weather, it's less, and so forth and so on. And you can change all these. Um, uh, yeah, I guess the only other thing I forgot to mention was that this information here that's in this uh, uh, dialog is kept in the TWX file. Um, so that's what actually contains all, all of the global information and the FMAP file 
um, is the one that contains the information for each location on the map and weather gen uh, will create both those files for you if you want and that's covered in the other tutorials hopefully that makes sense um, I'm Tyron with the first VFW feel free to ping me on the BMS forums if you have any questions about weather gen or about weather in general uh, I hope this was helpful